Good evening, guys. It's Clear Sky here. Sorry, I haven't been on YouTube lately. Been busy. But uh, I came back tonight because I would like to talk about something that happened to me two days ago. Today is October 14th, 2020. And two days ago was Columbus Day. And so on Columbus Day, I had possibly the single worst amusement park experience I think I've ever had in my life. So on Columbus Day, I decided to visit Six Flags Over Texas, the closest amusement park to where I live. It's like, I'd say maybe 35 minute drive from where I live, something like that. Um, takes kind of a while to get to Arlington. But, so I visited Six Flags Over Texas on Monday, Columbus Day. I'm going to document what exactly went wrong that day. So, uh, so, okay, so before I get into that, let me go back a little bit over the course of the summer. So, over the course of the summer, I took two vacations. Yes, I took two vacations during the pandemic because I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. Just, uh, so the first, uh, the first vacation I took was to Universal Studios in Florida in July. Yes, I went to Florida in July. Yeah. Um, and then in August, a month later, I went to Cedar Point up in Ohio. I'm sorry, my chair is probably creaking a lot, by the way. Stupid. I should have got one from Ikea. I don't know why I didn't. I need to go to back, back to Ikea and get a new chair because this one's falling apart. Like, literally. Now, at both of these parks, Universal Studios and Cedar Point, they had a ride reservation system. Where... And it was required. Like, you needed a reservation to get on certain rides at, the, at these parks. Now, at Universal Studios. Now, there were two rides total where you needed a reservation. Now, there was one, it was one ride at each park. At Universal Studios, you needed a reservation for the Jimmy Fallon ride. Which, I don't know why you would need a reservation for that ride. Because, like, literally no one was reserving anything for that ride. So, like, why that ride? I have no idea. But... Uh, the Jimmy Fallon ride at Universal, and then over at Islands of Adventure, they required it also for Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. And the way it worked is, you downloaded the Universal Studios app, or something like that, on your iPhone, and you would, like, reserve a certain time, and then you would come back later, you know, uh, kind of like the Fast Pass system at, at Disneyland, or Disney World. So, you know, it's, it's similar to that, except the main difference was it was mobile instead of the printed tickets. And that was very useful in the case of Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure, since that's the most popular ride at the park. Um, it was useless for Jimmy Fallon. Not saying it didn't work, it was, it was just useless. But for Hagrid's Motorbike, Motorbike Adventure, it definitely worked. I clocked two rides on that ride, and it was amazing, by the way. You should go ride it. Um, now, and then at Cedar Point. At Cedar Point, they had a similar system where they handed out paper tickets for Capital Dragster, Millennium Force, Maverick, and Steel Vengeance. For those four rides. Those are the four most popular rides in the park, apparently. That's what it seems, anyway. And so you needed a little ticket that they, that they would hand out at 11 a.m. when the park opened, and later at 3.30 p.m. And they would have, like, times on them, like 12 to 1 or something like that, and you would go back later and get on and ride and all that. For just four rides... Which means, like, and, and you could do, like, all four of them at one time. Like, you could go from one ride to one ride to one ride and get reservations for all of them. And while you were waiting, you had 13 other rides in the park that you could still ride while you were waiting for one of the other four rides, you know? So, that system worked very well. It also worked pretty well at Universal Studios as well. So, what about Six Flags' reservation system? So... Yeah, let's talk about that. So I get to the park on Columbus Day, this past Monday. I get there, we get out of the car, we head to the front gate. And as I'm walking through the front gate, I notice there's a sign out front that said, We are testing a new reservation system today. You gotta get like a wristband and you use like a QR code on it or something and you make reservations with it. And my first thought is, oh, that's, that's cool. They did it at Universal, that worked. They did it at Cedar Point, that worked. You know, okay, that's that's fine. And it being Columbus Day, no, I thought it might be a little more crowded than usual. So I thought, okay, maybe that's why they're doing it. 
I mean, the park capacity was reduced anyway because of coronavirus, so I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't going to be, like, that crowded, but, I, okay, still, you know, and then I get in the park. So, to use this Six Flags reservation system, you have to use your iPhone. You go to, like, you use, like, the QR app or something, and you make a reservation to get in line. Now, I went and made a reservation for the Texas Giant because I wanted to ride the Texas Giant because the last time I was at the park, whenever that was, we didn't get a chance to ride it. So I'm like, okay, I want to ride the Texas Giant today. That's my priority ride for today. So I pull up on my phone the reservation website thingy, and I find out every single major ride in the park requires a reservation. Every single, like, it's not like Cedar Point where it's just four rides or one ride at each park at, at Universal Studios. Every single ride. And not only that, now you're probably thinking, okay, well, what's the big deal about that? Just, just listen. And I, I'm looking at this website, and for Texas Giant, it says the earliest available entry is two hours and 23 minutes from now. Two hours and 23 minutes. Minutes. So in other words, it's a 2 hour and 23 minute wait just to get in line. 2 hours and 23- I, I'm looking at my phone just stunned! Because not only that, but every other ride, in, and like I said, like, like every single major ride in the park required a reservation. Like, the Texas Giant, Titan, Shockwave, Superman, uh, well, uh, the Batman ride wasn't open that day, uh, Mr. Freeze, uh, the Riddler, Joker, the Skyscreamer, Pandemonium, the Bobsleds, whatever that, that ride's called. Every single major ride in the park required it. And, like, all the rides have, like, a minimum of an hour and a half to two hours just to get in the line. Like, I... I, I can't believe this! So, uh, uh, but that's not even the worst part. Just listen to this. So I make a reservation for the Texas Giant, and it tells me, okay, your reservation's confirmed. Okay, good for you. I, okay, cool. And then I go to make a reservation for the Titan. And what, what does the website tell me? You can only make a reservation for one ride at a time. So let me get this straight. So you're telling me I have to wait two and a half hours just to get in line for the Texas Giant and I can't make a second reservation until after I get off that ride? And then I presume, since you can only make one reservation at a time, so you wait two and a half hours to get on Texas Giant, you go and you ride that, you get off. Then you have to make another reservation and wait another two hours to ride another major ride? Now, what's so baffling about this was, you know, okay, and it, yes, it was Columbus Day. It was a major holiday, which is the only reason why the park was even open on a Monday in October to begin with. You know, yes, it was a holiday. Yes, it's a little more crowded than usual. The park wasn't, like, dead by any means. But... But again, park capacity right now is reduced. There is no way, at the maximum capacity right now at the park, there is no way they can have so many people in the park that every single ride would be two hours to two and a half hours. There's no way there was that many people inside the park on this day. Okay, there's no way. The parking lot, like I said, was about maybe two-thirds of the way full, which, like, not even that, really, because... Where I parked, every other parking space was coned off, I guess for social distancing and all that, you know. And not only that, but you know like that, that deep end of the parking lot, you know, at Six Flags that never fills up, like ever, unless it's Saturday, bring a friend free day, and a major holiday, like, like nice weather all in one day, you know. Like those days where literally every crowd factor is just there, like, yeah, you know. Uh, that part of the parking lot was not filled up. It was not packed. It was a little crowded, but it wasn't packed. There's no way every ride, or major ride, should have had a two to two and a half hour wait. There's just, there, there, there's no way. 
but it was because people had to use this dumb reservation system and you can, o can only make one reservation at a time. And then, okay, and let's talk about the non-reservation rides for a second. So there were some rides that didn't require reservation. Mostly the small rides that no one cares about. The most thrilling ride that did not require a reservation was the Judge Roy Scream. Which, if you don't know what that is, it's a little dinky wooden roller coaster that l literally never has a more than five minute wait time. Even on the busier days, uh, actually no, on the busier days, a 20 minute wait at the absolute most. And even that's only like on the busiest of days, you know. Like, maybe you could push 30 in like rare instances. But, uh, yeah, I, I waited about 30 minutes for Judge Roy Scream. When you have to wait 30 minutes for Judge Roy Scream, a little dinky wooden roller coaster, that's a big problem. And actually, when I got off that ride, the line was even longer because the, the line went, like, all the way under the bridge. See, that's the thing. Because you had to wait two to two and a half hours for every single reservation, guess what? Everybody was crowding in to the little dinky rides that didn't require one. The teacups. 30 minute wait for the teacups! I've never seen so many teenagers and adults in line for the teacups in my life! The, uh, the up and down swinging boat ride thingy, whatever that thing's called. The line for that ride was stretching outside of the queue! I have never, ever, no matter how crowded the park was, I have never seen that happen before. It truly takes special circumstances for that to happen. So the teacups line was long. The boat ride, the scrambler line was long too. Why? Because they all had the, they were, all the people waiting for their two hour reservation went flocking to those rides because there was nothing else to do other than wait in line for the food stand or just sit on a bench and do nothing. Which a lot of people were doing. What a lot of people ended up doing was they ended up waiting outside the queue zone or outside the main entrance for their time to get it, to get in. So guess what they were doing? They were all crowding together. It's 2020. Aren't we supposed to be preventing people from crowding together right now? Aren't we trying to do everything we can to stop people from crowding together? Is that why they have markers, you know, on the ground when you're standing in line? Let's say, hey, you know, stay here. Don't get closer than six feet from the people in front of you. So yeah, all these people are crowding together. I'm, I'm looking at these crowds thinking, someone's going to be spreading COVID in these crowds, okay? And then, because the lines were so long for some of the other rides, uh, people were not distancing from each other, because people are less likely to distance from each other, like when the line is really long for some reason. I guess, I, I don't know why, just, I guess, I guess so the line doesn't spill all the way out into the... Beyond, beyond the entrance, which it was in some circumstances doing anyways, but in any case, people were spreading out. They were all crowding together, and because there were less people waiting in line, like actually in line, and they had to just walk around the park looking for other stuff to do, you had more people walking around the, the walkways, so people were crowding together because those walkways aren't very big anyway. So between that, people gathering outside the entrances for their time to get in because they were so bored and they had no time to do anything else. The crowd control that day was a disaster. And people weren't social distancing, which means people were probably spreading COVID that day. So congratulations, Six Flags. Your new reservation policy is it probably spread COVID that day. It probably did. And here's what's going to happen, Six Flags. Listen to me very carefully, okay? If something happens and some major outbreak is linked to Six Flags, which, you know, we have ways of figuring that out. That's how we know bars are as, as terrible as they are during a pandemic because, you, you know, tracing or whatever they call it. If someone links a major outbreak to the park, guess what's going to happen? The governor's going to shut it down. He finds out there's a big outbreak there because you people running Six Flags weren't following the rules. Because see, that's the thing. The governor, 
He, he said the amusement parks could reopen. He did not say they could just reopen and do whatever they wanted. That they can't do. So, if the governor finds out there was a big outbreak at, at Six Flags Over Texas, he's going to shut the park down just like that. And if that happens, if something happens and Six Flags shuts down, nothing they can do in court is going to get him to reopen again. Probably not for a long, long time. So yeah, we'll see in the next few days, two weeks at the absolute most, what happens and if a super spreader event ends up spawning from this. Wouldn't surprise me at all. And if it happens, watch for the park to be shut down. It's probably going to happen. The park could actually be shut down. Now, is that something I want to see happen? No. But is it something that could happen? Yes. It certainly could happen. And what kind of reputation do you think that's going to put on the amusement park industry? Not a very good one, right? Not very good. I think that's going to lower a lot of people's trust in the amusement park industry. All because you idiots at Six Flags were too stupid to follow the rules. You know... Six Flags Over Texas should just be lucky they're even open at all right now. In some states, they're not. Uh, places like Carowinds in North Carolina. Uh, what's the park in Virginia called? King's Dominion in Virginia. Elitch Gardens in Colorado. Um, the, the parks in California. Those parks are still not open. Now, I mean, I... I, I, I sorry. I think they should be open. I, I'm not saying they should be closed. I think they should be open. I'm just saying, some parks are not open yet. You guys are lucky enough to be open. So if you're, if you're going to be given the privilege to be open, follow the stupid rule. The, sorry, they're not stupid. Follow the rules, please. So yeah, aside from having a completely backwards reservation system that made, line, made wait times longer... They put more people at risk of spreading COVID. Congratulations! Oh, and also, um, if I may add, um, I didn't realize this when I was actually at the park. I realized this later after I came home and was reading some news on it. The uh, Because of this new reservation system, guess what? Folks with disabilities, you know that, uh, that, that elevator on the Titan for disabled guests? Can't use it now. Nope, those people got to wait. For the reservation system, just like the rest of us. Congratulations, Six Flags. You just officially killed the privilege, the one privilege that your disability guests got. You must feel real happy with yourselves. I hope you do, because wow. Um so, and yeah, okay, so let me just touch on the whole uh gimmick behind this reservation system and what Six Flags was really trying trying to accomplish with this. So the whole gimmick is you're waiting less time in line, right? Like, you're waiting for your reservation for your time, and you can walk around the park and do other stuff. Yeah, it's great. But when every single major ride in the park requires a reservation, and when you can only make one reservation at a time, you literally cannot do anything but the little dinky rides, and, uh, and you can ride one of the big rides every two to two and a half hours. That is all you're limited to. But hey, it's all cool because you're spending less time waiting in the line, right? You know, without the reservation system, if we just had to wait in the line, I would have waited maybe about 40 minutes for Texas Giant. That's not short. But at least I would, have, I would not have had to wait two and a half hours just to get in line. But it's all cool because I didn't have to wait in line, right? Because, you know, that's Six Flags' gimmick, right? Because Six Flags, I mean, because they're, you know, gimmicks, right? Six Flags, and they're gi they love gimmicks. They love gimmicks. The, uh, the, what was that thing called? The Oculus Shockwave. Because riding a, just riding a roller coaster is too boring and traditional these days, right? You gotta ride a roller coaster with the Oculus headset on. Oh my gosh, this is awesome! Funny how they got rid of that after, like, one season, but... Yeah, leave it up to Six Flags to just completely screw everything up. At least you're waiting less time in line. You're riding less rides, but at least you're not standing in line as much. Less time waiting in line. That's the Six Flags way. Yeah, leave it to Six Flags to just try to do something good and just completely, spectacularly backfire. I mean... I I can't express how bad this was. 
I mean, I mean, I, 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 I've seen some stuff fail before, you know, but woo, this was awful. I have never seen, well, I shouldn't say never, but I've rarely seen something, some kind of idea to make something better backfire just so hard. I've never seen it before. I mean, wow. If there's one thing Six Flags is good at, it's backfiring. Because, wow. You know, Universal Studios, they did it first, and they actually did it right. Um, Cedar Point, they did it first, they did it right. Universal and Cedar Point actually know how to use a reservation system. And then Six Flags tries it, and pff, woo, that backfired hard. Six Flags, get rid of your reservation system. It was it was stupid. It was pointless. It was counterproductive. And especially during the COVID pandemic of all times, you create a reservation system that ends up causing people to crowd together. Congratulations. That's all I have to say. This disaster. Absolute disaster. That was I rode four rides the whole day I was there. I rode the Judge Roy Scream, I rode the Scrambler, I rode the Teacups, and then finally I rode the Texas Giant, the ride I had reserved. And I couldn't ride a second big ride because I would have had to wait yet another two hours for that. That was my big day at Six Flags Over Texas. Now let me close with this. Now, of course Six Flags Over Texas is only like 35 minutes or so from where I live, right? It's, it's local. I've been there more times than I can even count. Since I moved to Texas in 2011, since I moved to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I've been there three times already. This uh, over the course of the summer, I went there twice prior to Monday, and they didn't have the reservation system back then. And guess what? It worked. It actually worked. I got to ride several big rides those two times I went, because it actually worked. But there was a bus from Louisiana. Yes, a bus from Louisiana, a church group that drove all the way to the Dallas-Fort Worth area from Louisiana. And that's the experience they got. Those people probably, like myself, probably only rode four, maybe at the most, five rides the whole time they were there. And they drove all the way from Louisiana. Congratulations, Six Flags. You probably officially... Ruined every experience for every out-of-town visitor that there, that there ever was. But of course, it being Six Flags. Six Flags is horrible at catering to out-of-town people. Horrible. I mean, I mean, not that they're great catering to the locals. But they're even worse catering to out-of-town folks. I mean, wow. They fail so hard in that category. Yeah, imagine driving five hours to a Six Flags park and that's your experience, right? Right? And, and, and imagine if they bring coronavirus back to Louisiana. So, yeah, d disaster. Get rid of the reservation system, Six Flags. Just get rid of it. That was that was bad. This is Car Sky Productions. That's all I've got to say. Um, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you've been to Six Flags over Texas or maybe any other Six Flags park that was also using this reservation system, let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Until next time, this is Car Sky Productions, signing off. Good evening, folks.